Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our webinar around uh, building the pharmacy for the future. I hope you're all well and all in good health. Uh, I'm joined this evening by my colleague, Karen McWilliam, one of our senior sales associates who looks after uh, youth pharmacists in the, in the community for Scotland and Ireland. Um, and we're going to take you through a little bit of an introduction into ROA, BD ROA, who we are, what we're doing um, in these changing times to really try and demonstrate how we're trying to support uh, pharmacy uh, in our communities around the UK. Uh, once we finish our presentation, we will very, very quickly pass on to Rob Partridge from Synergy, who will join you um, and, and talk to you about some of the opportunities with, it, with finance and finance that's available currently in the system. Uh, for you guys to think about uh, with regards to investing into your pharmacy. So I hope that works. Um, next slide, please, Simon. So we'll be, next slide again, BD Roa. I've gone through the overview of exactly what we'll be talking about. It's important that you try and gather as much information, questions that you may have as we go through. Uh, keep that stored. We will hope to get engaged in a question and answer session at the very end and to pull, pull the whole webinar together. Next slide, please, Simon. So, you've got a slide up here um, that's showing you a full continuum of BD products. But before I go into the detail of this particular slide, I just want to tell you a little bit about BD. Um, it's often said that BD is one of the largest companies not a lot of people have heard about. Um, BD is 125, um, BD is 125 years old, uh, just as a few days ago. Um, it, we've been around in healthcare for a number of different years and uh, supporting healthcare in every aspect. As a company, we're about the fifth largest med tech organization uh, globally, um, with so many touch points in healthcare, particularly our NHS and particularly pharmacies, whether it be from our syringes, needles, to our diabetic products, and so on and so forth. It's pretty much guaranteed that if you're a healthcare professional, you have had a touch point with BD Roa. Um, why do I say this? It's basically to share with you the heritage we have in healthcare and our passion for healthcare and supporting healthcare clinicians, including pharmacies, um, with regards to what they're doing and achieving a safe delivery of medication uh, and safe delivery of healthcare in general. So that's one of the things that uh, we're incredibly proud of. As far as BD Roa is concerned, BD Roa is part of the BD family. We sit in the medical division and are part of the medication management systems uh, part of the business. And with regards to BD Roa, the, the whole purpose of the Roa, of Roa is to support community pharmacies, that's our core, um, in order to help deal with some of the challenges that you are facing today. Um, many of you will be familiar with our robots, our smart of the Max prologues. Oh, that's, that, that's a key thing that uh, you know it embeds and underpins everything we do. Um, but we've tried to put together a solution, a well-balanced range of services, not just to give you a solution that picks your medication and dispenses it, but to think about the challenges you pharmacists are actually dealing with and are in, in an increasingly changing environment uh, that's evolving very, very quickly at this time. So what you'll see as we go around this particular slide is the store and pick solution, which is the robots. We start with a range, uh, an entry range of smart, uh, smart robots, which some of you will be familiar with. Um, these are our entry level uh, standard, standardized sized uh, robots, automated robots offer a, a range of different capabilities. We also have the VMAXs uh, in that area, which are the more bespoke, uh, purpose-built uh, solutions based on your requirements, your size, your pharmacies. Through our full consultation process, we, we, we talk you through that. We also obviously have a, a business that looks at um, uh, the, the distribution center, the warehousing side of things. So we have solutions for that aspect as well. Uh, that helps with crates and, and order buffers. Moving round, we know how more important uh, digital is becoming in everyone's lives these days, not least of all within the pharmacies. So through innovation throughout the years, we've developed a range of different products that are looking 
to take us that step and deal a little bit more uh, acutely with some of the challenges that you as business owners, you as in pharmacies and communities are dealing with. Try and help make the whole experience of your customers a little bit more seamless, a little bit more technology driven um, and, and make it more, more, uh, 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 more positive experience all around. So we've got things like our digital demotion screens. We've got our uh, self-checkouts, our pickups, which have been launched this year, um, V-Shelf. Then we move on to you know, bespoke packaging. We have a very, very, um, we've the largest provider of pouch um, business. Our rubber dose is one of the, uh, it's a large scale pouching operations. That's one of the things that uh, is very much uh, a driver with regard to that bespoke um, medication per, per patient uh, solution. When you look at everything that we're trying to offer, it's a full suite of solutions that hopefully cater to some of the challenges that you're experiencing, some of the, um, the moves that you want to make by way of investing in your business and thinking ahead of, uh, to the future as to you know, making your, your, your business just as relevant as we evolve. Next slide, please, Simon. So I mentioned earlier on, our core business is pharmacy. Absolutely, we have been in this market for the longest time and we do believe uh, you know, we're pioneers in this space. Uh, community pharmacy is, is the crux of BD Lower. That's where it started off in Germany. That's where it's still uh, headquartered globally. Uh, that's where it's still manufactured. Uh, and it's still very much the heart and soul of the business. But throughout the years, with the, uh, with the evolution of our innovations, our investments in innovations, we've moved into pouch packaging, which I've mentioned earlier on, wholesale, wholesaling and uh, uh, pharmaceutical distribution centers, hospitals, and more recently, even animal healthcare. The range of our technologies and where it's applicable is really, really, uh, really, really expanded. Uh, and again, we're trying constantly on a global level to look at AR core, but where else can we be relevant as we move forward? Can you tab on the, um, the next slide, please? So when we look specifically at community pharmacy, because it's still our core, it's still our priority. Um, next slide, Simon, please. Thank you. No, go back. No. Thank you. So when we look at community pharmacy, you know, for you, for you pharmacists out there who are owners uh, or working or running, you know, maybe a single unit or multiple units, it's been a very, very challenging time, not least of all because of COVID, but you certainly stood up and showed yourself to be the third pillar of the NHS. Uh, and it's still our core, it's still our priority as far as BD Rowe is concerned. And as we, as we continue to evolve, it's important that we continue to hold join you on this journey uh, and support you to, to ensure that the experience of adopting um, automation is as seamless as possible. So a few things that may help give greater satisfaction around why a BD rower. Our heritage shows that globally we've got over 11,000 uh, rower solutions worldwide. When we look specifically at the UK, you know, over 250 in store base in retail <coughs> alone, another 350 uh, when we include the, um, the hospital side of things. And certainly we're the number one organisation uh, supporting pharmacies uh, and, and certainly installing robots and automation within the pharmacy side of things. And what we pride ourselves on is that, you know, you're not just buying a, a robot from BD, but it's we're working with you because you've got a thought to change. There's a reason to change, and you may not quite be clear on that. Our job is to be, help you um, make that clarity more and more distinct for you, to hold your hand, to make sure that you're uh, supported throughout the journey of this change for the adoption. And we've built an organisation around that to make sure that you know, we're able to deliver that uh, premium service better than anyone else in the market. We have the largest in-store base, so we, we have lots of reference sites and customers out there that we, we, can, we can demonstrate and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll share their experiences with you. We have prof professional solution designers, an account management team. You'll be hearing from Karen shortly uh, as one of our senior account managers. Um, but our heritage and our experience on the dedicated projects that we've done 
the customer care consulting, consultant team on the training side of things, the supporting you and your teams to really understand how to get the most out of the machines. Uh, our service is, you know, is something that we're incredibly proud of. 24 seven hotlines, remote, remote monitoring of your machines, as well as a, a large uh, field force out there of service engineers to ensure that we can get them out to you as and when uh, you require. The whole point of me saying this is that, you know, in, in your thoughts and your uh, discussions about, you know, whether to automate, we hope and feel that you, you will find BD Rower as a partner of choice. Um, our heritage says as much. Our expertise and experience in doing this is something that we feel will give you comfort and help you through to, to automating and changing uh, and reaching the goals that you actually want to achieve. Simon, next slide, please. So we'll go to our first poll. The 37% have said yes, 41% sort of, not entirely 11% and 11% haven't. So that's great. Um, so you're certainly hopefully going to get some information through this uh, webinar that will hopefully be useful. So that's great. When we look at the, when we look at the reasons for automation, they're multifaceted. Um, there's lots of surveys that have been done. And we, we obviously invest in ensuring that we understand our marketplace and what pharmacists are going through. These are some of the pain points that have been highlighted, not just by ourselves. We've seen similar surveys with the MPA uh, who are hosting this as well. But pain points that have been highlighted by uh, pharmacists, time and stress comes up very, very often. You know, if they had more time, it would be able to deliver more services, uh, reduce the stress, time to think, time to, uh, particularly after COVID, where, you know, we've seen firsthand um, just how manic you as pharmacists have been. Um, uh, some, some of the comments have came back that, you know, I've made time to think we've just got to deal with the pressures. Uh, so time and stress, man uh, stress management are key areas of things that pharmacists are saying they would love to be able to address. Inventory management, uh, you know, having an easier way to monitor the changes, uh, you know, uh, of, uh, and the effect on gross profits, reducing stock holding, and better managing stock in, stock out sorts of things. Uh, again, massively, massively uh, important. Uh, significantly reduce our storage space. You know, it takes, the currently storage is taking up quite a lot of, um, uh, space within the, the, the floor space of, of your units. So that's a, also a consideration. And then, the, you know, more so than ever, we are seeing a massive global impact on workforce as far as um, general, general, the macroeconomic situation, but in pharmacy as well, we're seeing massive strains on, you know, uh, absenteeism, um, you know, cost of staff is going up because you can't get hold of them trained staff, you know, leaving the industry. There's lots of impact there on the workforce. I'm sure you guys could uh, describe that a lot better than I can. But these are areas, pain points, that we've got the forefront of our mind that we feel the technologies that we're talking about, that we're, we're, we're talking to you as uh, potential customers of BB Rella uh, about and trying to help alleviate uh, I hope that these resonate with you and you may well have other pain points which we can potentially discuss at the uh, Q&A. But uh, these, are, these, are, these are four key areas that stand out, come back around quite often. Um, so I hope that resonates. Next slide, please, Simon. So for those of you, there are a few of you on the, on the uh, survey that you know, have little or no understanding of what the central benefits of automation are. Um, Efficiency is key. Um, and if you can tab on Simon, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So I'm going to pass on to Karen here, who's one of our senior uh, 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 sales associates at BD Rower, who is actually out there most days with you guys, talking about what your requirements are, what the benefits are to your business. So over to you, Karen. Thanks, Josh. Um, so in the previous slide, Josh had mentioned about what the main pain points are in pharmacies. 
Um, and it's something that I see every single day when I'm out facing customers like yourselves. Um, actually, my background myself is I'm actually a pharmacy technician, um, but I'm very inexperienced now because I've been 20 years as a sales rep. So even in 20 years, things have progressed on. However, it's, it's never been the perfect pharmacy. Um, so going back to those pain points um, in pharmacy, what I'm hearing a lot of is there's just not enough staff. The cost of staff is rising. Major stock shortages, not having the right combination of stock um, to be able to cater for the, the business that's coming through the door. Um, keeping on top of accuracy, which is a massive point, um, because if you're so overworked, um, accuracy might be an issue um, because you're working so fast. Um, and not get enough staff to cover what you're trying to do. So this is something that could be a risk. Um, you've got no time, absolutely no time. And the, just the workload is quadrupling, especially since COVID. Um, I, I see a lot of pharmacies that were particularly quieter before because of the way that they've shifted the, the, the delegation of prescriptions. It's made pharmacies that were once really, really quiet, extremely busy, and they just weren't catered enough um, and ready for the, the prescription volume walking through the door. Um, so where does that leave us? How can BD help you with this? Um, so we've got a range of products um, that can help you. Um, we've got off-the-shelf robots, which generally are for lower volume pharmacies. Um, and when you think that lower volume pharmacies couldn't justify a robot, the benefits are the benefits. They're still going to save you time. They're still going to save you say if you stock, they're still, they're still going to free up the time to let you focus on the things that are important to your business, uh, like services, for example. So, so we cater for lower volume pharmacies. We've got a range of products that cater for that. And we've also got a range of products that are for the larger volume pharmacies that are bespoke. Maybe your pharmacy's a bit too small and you think, I'm never going to fit a robot in here. Um, well, actually, have us along. Let us have a measure up. And actually, there is a bespoke range. Let's see if we can get one in. Um, so again, don't, don't think that we can't do this. There's always a way. We'll find a way. Um, so what is what, what are the robots going to do for you? So let me tell you a little bit about um, the actual functionality that the robot would offer. So we can dispense original packs um, ranging from the size of a, an eye drop all the way up to a box of fiber gel. So just to give you a rough idea of the kind of sizes that you can fit inside there. Um, we can handle part packs. Part packs is a really great fit feature um, within the robot. Um, again, saves you time. And again, it means that you don't need as much shelving. Um, things that you don't necessarily put in the robot would be things like your dressings or like large bottles of Gaviscon. Um, but we generally find that customers that have robots generally have about one or two bays left for stock and um, that don't go inside the robot but I would say probably about 98% of your stock does go in the robot so what does that do for you um, so that allows you to have complete stock control um, over that so you've got your live stock levels and um, having the, the majority of your stock inside the robot and um, the robot can dispense probably up to about three packs um, between eight and twelve seconds approximately um, so that then allows you to free up your time. Uh, it frees up the time to let you concentrate on extra services that are revenue generating for your business. Um, it allows you to upskill the staff that you've currently got. Actually hang on to them and invest in the staff as well. Um, you could ups upskill them to become accuracy checking technicians, which ultimately then frees up the pharmacist time to let you focus on the additional services that you guys are asked to do. Um, which again are extra re uh, revenue generating for you. So it takes the pressure off you guys. Um, so that's that's more the, the dispensing efficiencies. Um, going on to the staffing efficiencies, having a robot allows you to, it will enables you to um, plan your staff a lot better. So what time of the day do you need the staff to start? It allows you a better coverage. Um, the robot gives you um, reports that lets you see where your peak times are. I think you probably already know a lot of this already, where your peak times are, but it actually breaks it down and lets you see exactly when you need the most cover. Um, but having a robot, we find that pharmacies are, like when there are staff shortages, um, like holidays or sickness, 
the rest of the staff in the pharmacy, it doesn't impact on them so much because the bulk of the work is taken off them by doing all the dispensing. So you don't feel the pain so much when someone is off sick or off on holiday. So you find that you actually retain your staff. I had actually a customer up in the north of Scotland that had his robot three weeks, three weeks. And I had phoned him up and I'd said, how are you getting on with your robot? And he says, oh, it's great. It's great. I love it. And I say, so forget that. I don't want to know that you love it. I want to know what changes has it made to your business? How has it helped? And he said, well, put it this way. When I get my repeat prescriptions in the morning, I used to still have them sitting on the bench when the afternoon pile came in. And then the afternoon pile was still lying there the next morning, he says. So I either had to pay extra overtime for the staff to cover the, the workload that was coming through the door, or we just dealt with yesterday's prescriptions. And then ultimately it was a knock-on effect for stock. Um, so basically what he did was when he got his robot three weeks in, he actually said that he's now got two hours free in the afternoon uh, between the morning's prescriptions and the afternoon's prescriptions. And the afternoon prescriptions were actually complete, ready, checked and put on the shelf for collection before they closed at night. So it was a clean day the next day. They didn't have to pick up yesterday's, yesterday's business. So it does allow you to free up that staff time to let you focus on what's important in the job. Um, we have, I have another example, which I think is really important. Um, during the COVID times, we had a customer, again, over in the Glasgow area, that had 15 staff in her pharmacy. Um, she had a robot about two months at the time. So she's, it's a very new installation. And nine of her staff went down with COVID, nine. And which meant the rest of the staff actually had to isolate. And the NHS had actually suggested that they close the doors but because they couldn't continue with their business. But luckily for this customer, she doesn't actually work in her pharmacy. So she jumped into the pharmacy. She took her nephew with her. And between the pair of them, they normally dispense about 11,000 items a month. They managed to operate for about five or six days alone. Yes, they worked on a Sunday, but they still maintained the business. They still kept the customers coming in the door. They're still able to fulfill people's prescriptions with two members of staff. Two. I know probably the extra services weren't getting done at the time, but it made her see what actually she could do more with the staff's time when everybody came back to work. She said without that robot, she couldn't, she couldn't have done it. She couldn't have done it. So that's where the staff efficiencies come in. In terms of stock control, um, the robot works with all the major uh, PMR suppliers in the UK and Ireland. And basically what happens is the robot feeds the livestock levels over to the PMR systems. So it means that when you're operating your PMR system, you're seeing live stock levels as to what you have in stock and what you could be doing with ordering more. So you've got more visibility and more control over your buying patterns to make sure that you've got the right amount of stock. Now, on top of that, we have additional reports in there. The reports are phenomenal. There's a report in there that allows you to see stock days. So it'll show you what your current stock levels are inside the robot. It'll tell you how many times you've dispensed it in, say, the last six months, just as an example. And then it'll tell you how many days of stock you're carrying at this moment in time per line. So if I look at aspirin, for example, I could actually see with aspirin that I'm holding 400 days worth of stock, which is way, way, way too much. But they're peanuts. They're pennies to buy. You probably got a great deal at the time when you bought it. And it's a fast moving line as well. So you want to have loads. So that doesn't matter. You can justify that. But say it was Abilify, on the other hand, where it's now available in a generic form. So say you only had three boxes in there. You think, well, what on earth am I doing with that? I dispense it as a generic now. And it's very, very, very expensive. And the likelihood that that's just going to lie there and go out of date. So it gives you this visibility of what to do with your stock and actually we with our consultants can advise you on how best to deal with that stock and how to reduce your stock holding. What it also does is it lets you know what what stock is going to be going out of date in the near future. So I would look at the next six months and have a look at the stock and it would tell me what exactly is going to go out of date. The robots are designed to dispense the shortest dated pack first. But when you're actually loading the robot, it's reading the 2D barcodes that are in all the packs. 
So therefore, it gives you proper stock rotation. When I worked in a pharmacy, when an order came in, if I got three boxes of Atenolol that came in, I would take the three boxes that are on the shelf, lift them up, and then put three underneath. Good for me, stock rotating. But that's not stock rotation. That's first in, first out. What the robot's actually doing for you is shuffling those the stock in order, which means that you have a reduction in wastage. So we find that a lot of our customers massively reduce their wastage. If you're lucky enough to have other pharmacies within your chain, you could actually get rid of half of that stock off to pharmacies that are actually using it um, so, that you're, so that they're not buying it from the wholesaler. Because actually your group could be buying all the time, but you could have the stock in your robot at all times. So you could actually share out your stock between the branches. So that's that's just another idea. If you look at, some people ask me about the autoloader. The autoloader is a no-brainer, if you ask me. Um, a lot of customers buy this automation just because of the autoloader. It's worth its weight in gold. And the way to justify it to yourself is to ask yourself, how many hours a day do you spend taking in the deliveries? How many deliveries a day are you getting? How, how many hours do you take, do you spend taking in the deliveries, checking the invoices, and then putting the stock away on the shelves? And if you were to say to me, four hours a day, that's costing me four hours a day. How much are you paying the staff to do that? What could you do with that time? What could you do with the staff if I freed you up those four hours? What if I was to tell you that one of their autoloaders was approximately £1.40 an hour? It's nothing. One pound forty an hour. You know, it's like a fraction of what you're paying your staff. So it's an absolute no-brainer. It's reading your reading your expiry dates and it's giving you proper stock rotation. And it's a job you don't do. No one puts stock away. You chuck it in the hopper and then you go on with the things that generate revenue. That's me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Very very uh, precise as always. Um, can we move on? Our second poll question is, how long does it currently take your team to retrieve a standardised prescription? Less than a minute, one to two minutes, two to three minutes, or longer than three. Okay, so just to run you through those results then, so um, the lowest proportion say less than a minute, so only 8% of people say less than a minute. Um, the majority, one to two minutes, that's 42% of our audience. Two to three minutes is 29%, and longer than three minutes is 21%. Thank you very much. Excellent. Can we move on? video there was basically there to demonstrate just how quick it was to scan, call for the medication, whilst the robot's picking, labels being printed, um, it's ready, the medication's dispensed, the label's put on and it's checked for the last time in approximately 27 seconds. That that short video that we just used to demonstrate is a, it's a rower machine, but it's just there to demonstrate how much quicker and the efficient or partly an efficiency that uh, the, the, the robot will enable you to have uh, from that process of uh, you know collecting, getting your prescriptions ready and so on and so forth. It does transform that whole workflow uh, and important to see in real life. We see this a lot and this is something that comes back from our customers very, very regularly saying, well, it's changed the whole workflow. It's really taken uh, speeded up the amount of time that we're able to do that in and, and so on and so forth. So I hope that was a very, very brief demonstration as to how, uh, how, how quickly it can be with a robot. We move on to the next slide, please. So what we're going to do is basically use a couple of case studies. Um, this, one's, this one's from Maybury Pharmacy, um, where, uh, you know, I'll let you give, give you some time to read Rachel Potter's, uh, the pharmacist owner's uh, comments there. But 
you know, a couple of highlights there. It easily handled 25% increase in prescriptions during the COVID-19 lockdown. More time to focus on customers. Staff can be transferred to other services. Not, they're not idle, they're being transferred to do more potentially revenue generating activities. Capacity to expand prescription business is realized. Just some key things that they're able to, that, that they've been able to realize since uh, the, the implementation of a BD Weller uh, automated robot. You can move on to the next slide very, very quickly. I'll hand back over to Karen because this is one of Karen's customers. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Um, so this is one of my customers up in Scotland um, who has originally started doing about 15,000 items a month before he got his robot installed. And at the time, just before his robot arrived um, to be installed, <clears throat> he had called me up and he said, look, I've got two members of staff that have just resigned. What do I do? Do I replace them? Do I not replace them? Um, and I said, no, hang fire. Just wait and see. Wait and see what this is going to do for you. So he got his robot installed. And like I say, the, the efficiencies come really, really quickly. Um, you notice the difference in workflow straight away. And within a couple of weeks, um, he, he found that he actually had another two of his staff twiddling their thumbs. And, and I'd said to him, so what are you going to do there? And he said, well, I've actually got a waiting list for community trays for um, the patients for the... The, the, the tray cards that you get. So he said, what I'll do is I've got a waiting list here. Other pharmacies charge a fortune for these. Um, he says that's the surrounding pharmacies round about him. He says, what I'll do is I'll take these customers on and I will allocate those two, two extra members of staff that he's got at the moment to, to turn around that business. So he actually grew his business and, and reduced his staff holding as well. Um, they're much happier with the, the workflows that they have. It's a much calmer environment that they work in. Um, and one of the things for this case study I wanted to do was find out what kind of staff uh, stock savings that he'd made. Um, so again, what I'd mentioned before was about the stock days report, and this was it. Um, and what he did was in the stock days report, it tells you um, how many times you've used something, but it also tells you if you've never used something. And it also tells you if you've not got enough of something, so it's a balance that's waiting to happen. Um, but by collating the information on this report, I sent it through to him and I said to him, could you put a value on the stock that you've got too much in here? In the first two months of having that robot, he managed to find approximately, it, this isn't, this isn't, but this was only the expensive lines. He managed to find eight and a half thousand pounds worth of stock that was sitting dead completely dead, hadn't moved, and never likely to move. So he had the luxury of other pharmacies that you could send that off to, but it's a way of the robot is, is enabling you to see um, something that you think you might know when you look at the shelf, that's moving, that's moving fast, but, but actually it's not. Uh, the proof's in the data. So yeah, they're very, very happy with the machines. Happy for visitors, if you ever want to come up and have a wee tour to East Kilbride, happy to take you to see it. Um, but yeah, Absolutely in love with it. Wish they'd wish they'd never uh, wish they'd done it sooner. And just to let you know, they've grown to twenty thousand items now with the same amount of staff. Thank you, Karen. Brilliant. Next slide, please. It takes us to our final poll question. Fantastic. Okay, so that's a launch that should hopefully be on your screens in a moment. So our question, do you now feel you have a better understanding of how automation can help your pharmacy into the future? Uh, so yes, still not sure, but if it clearer or no. So okay, so we have to yeah, the vast majority say yes. So yeah, sixty five percent say yes, and the other thirty five percent say still not sure, but it's getting clearer. Okay, that's good. Okay, well, thank you. That's that. That's the end of our section. Uh, we hope that we've uh, given you some insight into what we do, why we do it, uh, and more importantly. Um, really generally hope if you still got questions, we've got a Q&A session at the end. Um, so please to hold on, make a note of those questions. We can, we can have some interaction then. Um, we also know that one of the things that comes up time and time again is this perception that it's really, really expensive to, to get one of these robots and so on and so forth. 
Uh, more and more new pharmacists have seen that it isn't. I think Karen's also demonstrated that, you know, the efficiencies are very, very quickly seen. Uh, but one question that does come up, what are the options for finance? Um, so on, on that note, I'm going to pass over to Rob Partridge from Synergy, who hopefully will tell you about some of the opportunities that are available out there um, for pharmacists. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Uh, hello everyone, uh, thank you for taking the time to, to listen to me today. Uh, my name is Rob Partridge and I'm the, the Founder and Managing Director of Synergy Finance. Um, before I kick off, I believe there will be a couple of polls popping up soon, So, um, but I'm very mindful that we, we're probably running out of a bit of time, so maybe if we just let them pop up and I'll continue with the, the presentation and you can answer them in your own time. Um, okay, so I, I've worked in the uh, banking and finance industry now for, for over 20 years. Uh, initially uh, specialising in the financing of IT and technology investments um, uh, for SMEs across the UK. I then moved into uh, the healthcare acquisition and cash flow sectors, which has enabled my business to provide a holistic approach to our financial services. Um, we are predominantly a, a finance brokerage with access to over 100 lenders in the UK and Ireland. Um, after a successful career working in and around London, I decided that I would go it alone. And in 2015, I started Kingston Capital Finance, which offered asset, cash flow, and commercial mortgage finance options to the UK SME market. Uh, and then, uh, oh, sorry, we should uh, flip on to the next uh, um, slide, please. Um, and then in uh, 2018, I created Synergy Partner Finance, which specialized in, in sales enablement finance in the technology and pharma tech industries which is when our relationship with BD began. Uh, by the way, sales enablement finance is one of those uh, finance jargony terms for uh, when a customer is offered finance at the point of sale to help them afford their goods and services. Um, but this year, uh, we decided to, to merge those businesses, creating Synergy Finance, offering all of the products and services that I, I mentioned before. Uh, next slide, please, Simon. So, um, so here at Synergy Finance, we have three uh, finance divisions, uh, asset finance, cash flow finance, and property finance. They, they all have their unique products and services, uh, which I'll go into shortly. But before I do, I think it's really important for business owners to assess the risk and reward of, of any investment before approaching a lender. Uh, now, that might sound really obvious, but what I mean by this is put yourself in the lender's shoes. Think like a lender. Uh, where are the assets in your business and where are the assets in the investment? Assets are not just physical ones like dispensing robots. They're also uh, your debtors, your customers and your cash flow. In other words, don't be quick to give away your hard earned assets as security, because we all know that your bank will take charge over your business, a personal guarantee or even a charge over your personal property. And in some cases, they will take them all. Uh, but isn't that a little excessive? Um, think about your assets in the business and leverage them. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, okay, so we, we can finance any business asset, whether that be your nice, shiny and efficient dispensing robot, uh, the PMR software that talks your nice, shiny and efficient dispensing robot, uh, the EPOS that talks to the PMR software and the IT infrastructure that, that binds it all together. Uh, we can also help you with any shop refurbishments and upgrades to accommodate that nice, shiny and efficient uh, dispensing robot. Uh, in fact, there is very little that we can't finance. Uh, believe it or not, I, I do recall financing a, a herd of cows and, and even some coffins for display purposes in the distant past. Um, you'll note that uh, we have various products to suit your needs, including leases and operational leases for those assets that have a short life and need to be replaced regularly. Uh, we have technology loans for those software investments that also include service and support as a package. And we have higher purchase agreements for those assets that have a longer life like those nice, shiny and efficient dispensing robots. And of course, vehicles, whether that be your car or your delivery van. All of our products are tax efficient and you can use them in line with the new 130% super deduction tax scheme, which I'll go into more detail now. Next slide, please, Simon. Okay, so what is the 130% super deduction tax scheme? 
It's the new one-off tax scheme that the government introduced back in April 2021, designed to breathe life into the UK economy. The government wants you to invest in your businesses. To be more exact, they want you to invest in business assets that should create jobs. Qualifying assets are unhelpfully named as plant and machinery, which includes solar panels, office chairs and desks, computer equipment, and of course, that commonly invested in foundry equipment. Uh, not very helpful, but uh, let me assure you, all of the assets that I talked about in the previous slide are qualifying assets. So how does the scheme work? In simple terms, for every pound you spend on an asset, you will receive 25% back, uh, 20, 25 pence back in tax relief. And that tax relief will be realized straight away therefore reducing your corporation tax bill. Great news all round, but you must act fast because the scheme ends next March. Therefore, if you are thinking about investing in that nice, shiny and efficient dispensing robot, stop thinking about it and just do it. Uh, next slide, please. So to cash flow finance. We all know that the NHS have got a lot better recently at releasing those much needed contractual funds and often within 30 days. Um, so cash flow is not a worry anymore, right? Well, we all know that's not quite the case, especially if you need to make an investment in the business or you are looking to acquire another pharmacy. We have uh, products like revolving credit facilities and loans that use the NHS contractual income as security offering up to four times your average monthly income. Those products are similar to overdrafts, allowing you to dip in and out as and when you need it, only paying for what you borrow. We can also provide stocking facilities for those of you that are looking to purchase items in bulk in order to gain large discounts and to boost profitability. Cash flow finance products aren't all about assisting you with your day-to-day -day cash flow. They're also about helping you achieve greater goals, leveraging your greatest assets without giving away your hard earned security. Next slide, please. Whether you're looking to buy a pharmacy, a trading premises, or developing one from scratch, there are many secured finance products on the market to help you achieve your goals. Um, the healthcare sector is, is very attractive to lenders. They appreciate that it's a growing market and one that is developing fast to catch up with the rest of Europe. Some lenders are offering loans of up to 100% against goodwill and 80% against bricks and mortar. Rates are beginning to rise, as we all know, but I'm still seeing rates in the region of 2.5% above the base rate. These are variable rates, which are less attractive, which with all that is going on in the economy, but I'm also seeing fixed rates in the region of 35 to 4%, which will provide you with some peace of mind. There are also some attractive bridging loans available um, uh, for any of you that are looking to buy at auction or simply want to move fast whilst a more traditional secured loan product is worked on in the background. I've seen some rates starting at 0.5% per month. Of course, all of these examples are dependent upon your business trading history and your plans for the future. Next slide, please. Sorry, next slide, please. Okay, so what does the lender landscape look like at the moment? Here you will see just a handful of lenders that we work with presently. Unfortunately, you won't see Wesleyan Bank who have decided not to support the healthcare sector going forward, which has caused some concern. Uh, this is due to the recent takeover by Hampshire Trust Bank. If you have any borrowing with them, don't worry. They will continue to support you uh, in your existing, existing debt, but I'm sure some of you will be looking to, to jump ship. If that is the case, the likes of Barclays and Lloyds are still very active in the pharmacy market and are offering very attractive rates. NatWest, unfortunately, have a liquidity issue, having overlent during the pandemic, so you will struggle with them. There are, however, specialist lenders like Synergy Bank and Unity Bank who are keen to assist they can, uh, where they can, but they can be a little on the expensive side and not very flexible on the LTVs. There's also Shawbrook Bank, who are relatively new to the sector, but are proving to be very good at supporting pharmacies. They recently assisted one of ours securing a 1.5 million pound facility at 100% against goodwill over 20 years on a fixed rate of 4%. The asset finance sector is very strong with many lenders active and keen to lend. Rates are on the up, but we are seeing decent rates starting at 4% presently. 
We also have Grenka at our disposal, who are very keen and active in the Irish market and specialise in technology lending. All in all, the finance market is very strong and there is plenty of cash readily available to businesses looking to invest. Next slide, please. Okay, well, that, that's all from me. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me. I do hope it's been helpful. I would like to discuss, if you would like to discuss your financial plans in more detail, please do give me a call, drop me an email. Uh, my, my details are on the screen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rob. Really, really eloquent as always, and uh, very informative. I hope I hope the uh, participants are have seen a lot of use of uh, that little bit of uh, information as to what's out there. And generally, we hope that you've you've garnered some more information around what we're trying to do at Talk to you about automation and so on and so forth, and what we can offer. Uh, we'll move quickly to the Q and A session, I believe. Um, hi everyone, another voice on the on the line here. Um, I guess let's start with the first question, which is, is integration with PMR possible so the stock is automatically picked as scripts come through as opposed to waiting for a dispenser to start the dispensing process? Karen, do you want to take that question? Yeah, sure. Um, so basically, it will require you to input onto the PMR system before the robot will move. So the way that some of the PMR systems will operate is that when you scan your prescription, um, you will start populating the, the drug fields. And when you populate the drug field, the robot gets a feel for basically the first few lines of um, what, it's looking, what, what you're actually typing in or what it's actually seeing as a scan. And what it'll do is it'll just head straight to it and pick up the pack and deliver it. So generally, by the time that you've generated the label, the, the, the pack will be on its way to you. Yeah. Hope that answers that question. Perfect. Thanks, Karen. Um, one that's coming in in different forms. So I'll just ask one version of it. And if there's anything missed out, we can look back around to it. But how much um, does it cost to install and run a robot? And then a second part would be how many items would you consider before automation, so a minimum number of items, I would assume that means there. Well, I'll take the first part, Karen. If we go back to the, the beginning of the presentation, we have two ranges of robots, but it totally depends on what your requirements are. Uh, and we stress that it's totally dependent on what your space is, what your requirements are, and so on and so forth. And that's what our team get together, consult with yourself and really get to grips to understand exactly what your key priorities are. So the technicalities of size and so on and so forth are wide ranging, but I'll, I'll, I'll let Karen answer the, the second side. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I would say going back in, in the past, um, we used to say that pharmacies doing 4,000 items and above would easily justify entrance into automation. However, I've seen a complete shift in that nowadays, um, particularly since COVID. Again, COVID seems to have driven a hell of a lot here. Um, but I am now seeing pharmacies that are doing 2,000, 2,500 items. The way, again, the way to justify it to yourself, the benefits are the benefits, no matter what. Um, yes, it, they all cost whatever they cost, regardless of what it is that you're going to be having. And if you're doing lower volumes, the return investment might be slightly longer. However, if you're doing higher volumes, then the return investment is slightly shorter. But the benefits are still the benefits. You're still saving time. You're still saving stock. You're still creating more time to let you focus on other areas of the business. So there isn't really an answer to what the minimum volume is. Everybody needs to automate accuracy. I mean, is it a cost? On making a mistake on a prescription. Ultimately, that's it's. I don't know what more I can say to you, but there, there is, I, there used to be about 4,000 items, but I'm seeing a lot less customers coming, a lot less volume to customers coming to me for automation now. Thanks, guys. Um, along, along similar lines, um, what is the installation time and what does that process look like? 
I know that's a loaded question, but maybe if you can give a really streamlined answer okay. to it. I will do. Um, so generally speaking, on average, we will, throughout the, the planning process, is the planning process. We work with you from the beginning of when you decide, yes, we want to, you'll get someone like Karen making sure that you're absolutely happy before you sign on the dotted line. And then the project management team will plan it out for you. They will come in to do a kickoff meeting in order to make sure everything that's been planned, discussed, fits your purpose. That's part of the process. A date will be then agreed um, as to when you want to have the installation done, okay? And obviously, you know, that will be agreed between yourself, your sales manager and the projects team. That's agreed. But once we've got that data in the system, the projects team, the installations team, the service team then take over the project. And succinct answer, for a retail operation, we will allow about five working days uh, based on the installation uh, in order to make sure that that's installed uh, you know, completely to your, to your um, uh, specific specifications. However, um, this can vary depending on the level and the technicality of the type of product you buy, what it is that we need to do. We have a lot of installations, for example. Karen alluded to the fact that you may, on the per, your perception is, oh, my store is not big enough. But we put robots in lofts, we put them in cellars, we put conveyors in. The complexities of our build can vary wholesale. So we, we say on average five working days, um, but based on the complexity that can change. Is there anything you would add to that, Karen? Yeah, I would say it's about five working days for the build of the robot. So during that week, um, your shop flipper would generally set up a temporary dispensary somewhere to allow you to continue to dispense on a manual basis. On the second week, we will then come in to do programming, which is approximately five days as well. So you will ultimately go live on the first day of the third week. Um, and on that day, that's when your consultant will come in. They will show you how to load the robot and they'll show you how to operate it. And you go live, literally, you go live here and then. So I would say two, two weeks in total, but your shop fit can continue from the second week. So it's actually quite a slick process. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. I, I noticed that it's just gone half past. I don't know, Simon, if we have time to answer a couple more questions or if we'll look to take them offline for the ones we've not been able to come back to as of yet. So, yeah, no, I think you can go for another five, ten minutes. I think our audience is still here and engaged. So um, I think, you know, everybody is happy to, to have some more. And as you say, there will be follow-ups anyway. So, no, no, please do continue if you wish to. Okay, perfect. Um, then I would say the next one would be, how have the robots changed over the last 10 years or so? And how do you see automation developing over the coming years? I think another question that's along similar lines is, how well do you feel the robots age over a given period of time. Okay. So I'll start with this one. I'm sure Corey and Karen could all probably add in, but one of the things that uh, we're incredibly proud of is, that, is the heritage of BD Roa, a company born out of Germany, 1996, um, based in an area of ex expert engineering and manufacturing, and it's still there. Automation is what they do, and everything that we've invested in R&D is always keeping our customers at the forefront of what we do. So at any given moment, yes, we know what the situation is in the environment that pharmacies are dealing with, but we've also got a number of different eyes looking ahead, looking at trends, looking at what the next evolution is likely to be. So, you know, we... we <laughs> we've had to try and sort of cram in uh, so the, the level of innovation and we have evolved uh, right from the select itself, the Roller Select, which was the first automated robot in 1996. Various innovations in 2005, uh, we then got the Extent, uh, another Roller version, again, taking advantage of all the expertise we'd learned to improve that machine in 2008. That continuous level of learning and improvement is part of the philosophy of BD Roller. We're never ever standing still. 
we get to uh, 2009 and you see the evolution of the VMAX. We needed to give something that was more bespoke, not just off the shelf to customers who had Iggledy Piggledy work, uh, work spaces, were coming up with new ideas as to, um, you know, the, the, the level of complexity of what they actually wanted the machine to do. And we started that journey. And then you've seen the evolution of the VMAX, that our ability to uh, innovate that particular product from the 130 to the 160 to more recently the 210. And that evolution's continued. We're now in a space that I mentioned earlier on about digital. We've had to have an idea as to what is going to make that customer experience for pharmacies in our community that much more relevant, uh, competitive and profitable. So you, you see the evolution of new products all tied into our robot, our automated robot, such as our V-motion screens, which allow browsers within your store to do some of the research themselves of, of OTC products or so on and so forth, but also allow, you know, floor staff, floor, floor, floor support to interact with customers and talk through what their concerns are. We've got things like the pouching business, the lower dose, great acquisition by ourselves to fill a space in the marketplace. Um, we, we've then got the lower smart again. We've evolved even our standalone sort of off the shelf model uh, in 2018 with the lower smart 120. And that, that history shows or hopefully demonstrates the nature of what we're doing. We're keeping an eye on the trends at the moment. Uh, and seeing how our communities are changing, what the needs of pharmacies are, what healthcare needs there are out there, and how we, how, how we innovate and adapt and be relevant to you guys, the pharmacists out there, our customers, our partners. Um, what does the future look like? Uh, it, it's evolving. Um, there are so many trends out there. We have leaders all over the globe right now based on different continents telling us you know, it, it, it's about micro fulfillment. We're, we've got hub and spoke discussions in, in the UK. Um, you know, we, we, we've got more companies that aren't healthcare looking at automation and asking us for our expertise as to how we can adapt our, our, our product to suit their needs, mobile phone, animal health. Um, it's a continually evolving um, uh, environment. And what we pride ourselves on is keeping our finger on the pulse, listening to you, the pharmacist, listening to the healthcare system. We've got an advantage because when you look at um, BD as a whole, as a healthcare provider, it's touch points in healthcare globally are huge. Um, so we've currently got trends coming in from the whole holistic macro environment in healthcare, telling us what the changes are a little bit ahead of time. And that's one of the advantages of a, you know, being part of an organization like BD, large organizations, being around in healthcare for 125 years and still as relevant today as it was when it first launched its first syringe into the healthcare system. Um, so that's how I would answer that. Karen, have you got anything else you'd like to add? No, I don't think I could possibly add anything to that, Josh. That <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to add? No, no, I was um, I was just going to move on. We've got quite a few questions coming okay. in. So no I just wanted to, to jump over one for, for Rob. Um, what percentage charges um, do Synergy apply for arranging finance? If we, you're able to answer that. Yeah, sure. No, I can answer that. We, we don't charge a fee. It's as simple as that. Uh, we would get paid by the lenders uh, for any successful transactions that we complete with our customers. Um, the only time that we ever might charge um, a holding fee, if you want to call it that, is when we're considering um, mortgages um, for customers who want us to sort of scour uh, the, the, the industry to find the best product. We might say, well, we might charge them sort of uh, £300 plus VAT to do that work. And then if we, we find something that fits their needs um, and they go ahead with it, then we just take that fee off um, and reimburse them effectively. Um, occasionally, and it's very rare, I think I can count maybe two fingers of where it's happened, where we've done that work 
Um, and then the customers decided to go elsewhere. But because we've done that work, we'll, we'll keep that fee. So, but as I say, that's very, very rare and we don't charge a fee generally. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Um, I'm going to go last question just because um, we're, we're a bit over. And then anything that's not been answered, um, we're able to, to still see those questions after the session. So we'll, we'll try and come back to you individually on those. Um, but the last question, again, for Karen and Josh would be, can you briefly um, share worst breakdown case study and impact, cost of robot, out of range in a few years, and maintenance are key barriers? Any comments would be helpful. Well, Karen, we can start. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I can answer this question quite well because it's actually happened whilst I've been live in the pharmacy. Um, so yeah, they are machines. Um, I'd be a complete liar if I told you it didn't break down. They do break down. Um, it isn't often. It's a very rare thing to happen. Um, but in particular, there was when I first started with this company about nine years ago, um, given my background, I had to learn how to use these machines. And basically what had happened was I'd spent a, far, I spent a couple of weeks in a pharmacy just getting my head around what the robots do, what the benefits are, how did it change the business so that I could enable me to try and help sell these products. And one of the questions I had was, what do you do if it breaks down? And basically the customer who had had the robot by this point three years actually said to me, we don't know, it's never broken down. And I said, oh, OK, I said, well, there must be some sort of procedure, because how do you get your stock when it's inside? And they said to me, well, we don't know, it's never happened, but we've heard that there's something called emergency mode. And I said, right, OK, that's fine. So we phoned up the hotline and I said, please, could we turn on emergency mode into this robot? Because I need to see how we operate, because there needs to be a fallback plan if the robot isn't working. And basically, they told me to open the door and pressed the button that says, do you want to operate emergency mode? And I said, yes. And the customer continued to do labels on their PMR system. And the robot went into full swing and started verbally shouting, day five, shelf 30, five rows from the right. But the funniest bit of it all was it was still speaking in German because it was still set as German language when it was originally built the three years before. So we had to dial back into the robot and turn it into English language so we could understand what on earth it was saying to us. So one, that tells you it is rare for a breakdown, but two, there's a fallback. And even better than that, we've got a massive infrastructure of service support. We've got something called predictive service where we actually look at the data that's coming out of the robot. If there's any components that are not performing in the way they should be we will send out an engineer prior to any kind of breakdown. If we're not so lucky to catch a breakdown, we've got the engineers that will come out and they'll try and resolve your issues. 69% of calls into our hotline are fixed remotely. So no need for an engineer to get you back up and running straight away. And 89% of our call outs with engineers are fixed first time. So there's a great infrastructure in place. We also service your robots twice a year. It's all part of the contract. Um, so basically they'll come out and they'll have a look at the robot and they'll replace any parts, any anything to do with wear and tear, they'll replace that and get you back up to having a pristine robot again. They'll even hoover it for you. Okay, hope that answers that question. Hope that answers that question. Thanks, Karen. Um, as I said, we still have some questions left over, but we are running out of time so what we'll do is then um, we'll take those away and we'll come back to you offline with any specific leftover queries that are there um hope that hope that's okay yeah no that's that's fine final comments to me is just to thank you all for your participation tonight i hope it's been useful um we will follow up with any other questions as corey's just mentioned but please do uh, if there's, is there anything that we've missed today or other questions that uh, we don't manage to, to get back to, please do contact us and uh, we'll be more than happy to, to contact you personally and uh, with that for you. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else wanted to add anything before we uh, close off? No? No? Fantastic. Well, yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, and just to mention as well, so tonight's webinar has been recorded. So if you want me to watch it back or if you want to share it with colleagues or peers, you can do so from tomorrow from the past events page on the MBA website. 
Um, but that just yeah, leads me to thank all of our speakers tonight and thank you for the, our audience for being so engaging. Um, and we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. And uh, as, as, as Joshua mentioned, the team will be following up with, uh, with all of you uh, from as soon as possible, really. So thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.